Thank you. All right, this is just a few teaching points I use for a single person forcible entry on the door. Um, what we noticed, we got this great prop. It's a great prop. Uh, Rick's door that he makes is, to me, is better than the other one we've got. Uh, there's a few things I wish was a little bit differently. I wish we had the bottom half of the door. One of the big things we always teach is uh, to put your foot on the door, push on the door. That'll put pressure on the locks. It'll also let you know if there's any locks down low. And to come up here and push on the door on the top, and it'll let you know if there's any locks up high. You don't necessarily have to come in here and start blasting on the door like that. All right. I wish that was different on this one. And also, this door has really hard points, so you don't have to worry about the jam breaking away. And that's the big issue that we're talking about now is having a plan B. So we want to talk about plan A and plan B. First, we talk about the mechanical advantage built into the bar. This is a 30 inch bar. It's got a two inch adds on the end of it. So when I stick it in here like this, and I put my hands all the way down at the end like this, that's a 15 to one mechanical advantage. 30 divided by two is 15. With my hands already out to here, I'm getting a full 15 to one mechanical advantage. Now, if I push down like this, and let's just say I'm pushing 100 pounds down on it, that's 1,500 pounds over there. The closer I slide my hands in, the more I cut the mechanical advantage. We're probably down to about a seven to one right now. All right. Well, on most many doors, that's gonna work just fine, especially the commercial doors that are built just like this. You put that in there, get some weight on the locks. You're gonna get a little bit of a gap because doors have a, most uh, residential doors, and that's what I'm talking about today, have a weather stripping in them. So you're gonna get a little bit of a gap when you lean on it, all right? Feel that first good pop, get it all the way down. Take your axe, stick it in there, and drive your axe a little bit. Shoot for the gap. Just like that. The door's still holding a little bit. I wouldn't go to three point just yet, because we can still make that ads work for us with that good mechanical advantage. Pop it a little more. Now we go to three point, and the door opens right away. All right, that's plan A if it works. Like pressure on the locks, bevel towards the door. We've already got the door to move a little bit. Go for the jam. All we're doing right there is just capturing the progress. Now we're gonna go bevel towards the jam. All right. Now a lot of times, like I was saying earlier, if the door, if the deadbolt isn't locked, that door's gonna pop right open right now. But most of our comp apartment complexes have a couple of deadbolts in them. They've got a longer throw, so you're gonna need to keep going a little bit. So, a couple things I can do right now. I can drive that in there like that. Most of the time, if you just keep doing that, you're gonna get it through there or you're gonna hinge behind the door, one of the two. But, say we're at this point and the door still hasn't gone. Now we're in there pretty deep. Now just because I have the bevel towards the jam doesn't mean that I still can't get a push on it. All right? I could still get a push on it like that. Then turn the tool over, back into here. Now I've got that big gap open. Remember, before you go to three point, roll it down one more time. And then three point, and the door's open. Okay, one more time. We'll go over plan B just one more time. And uh, remember that everything we're doing is a progression. That most of the time, a couple of moves on a residential lightweight door and you're gonna defeat it pretty easily, most of the time. Now, you're gonna break the jam. Uh, they've got a little metal plate in there that's supposed to keep people from walking up and kicking them and knocking them open. But all it does is tear up the jam more, all right? So it's gonna bust up the jam, but that's fine. The whole point of this is to remind, is to be able to open and close the door, maintain door control. And also, if you do this right and you get in doing this quick, it only takes a second, and then you can actually re-secure the door when you leave the residence. So going back over it one more time. Bevel towards the door, because that's what we're forcing first right now. Pressure on the door. All right. Put that in there like that. If I have to, I can put my knee on there and get a little bit more in there. Now, it's bevel towards the jam. Because I'm not forcing the door, I'm forcing the jam. 
I'll do it from this side so you guys can see a little bit. You can see it move away. And I'm able to turn the axe. Remember, shooting for daylight with that axe. Like I said, most of the time, the door is going to be gone by now. Especially if the deadbolt isn't locked. The door would probably break right there. But remember, if the door's still not gone, they've got a rack of uh, deadbolts in there. They've got a long throw. They've got a rim lock. They've got something on there that's a little bit more. So you got to keep moving forward. That's what the plan is for. So remember, now we're still going bevel towards the jam because I'm not going to be able to get this thing in there good enough without really without a partner to force it. So I'm going to get one more little force with the bevel towards the jam. And then the door broke. If the door didn't break, then remember, we'll go back, bevel towards the door, adds down, three point, the door's gonna pop. Those are your progression. Bevel towards the door to get your initial gap. Stick the ax in it. Bevel towards the jam to pry the door back against and the jam away. Drive the ax in. Before you pull that tool out, one more good force down, flip the tool over force it again if the door's still not going then we go to ads rolling it down for the 15.1 mechanical advantage the door's done there's also the the five inch ads on the 30 inch bar is going to give you a six and one mechanical advantage that's good mechanical advantage too but you have to think about also usually when people are forcing it like that they're snatching back on it and it's going to make it pop out that's one of the reasons I don't normally do that and I don't normally teach that because every time somebody gets up there, because once we put all our gear on, we put our mask on our face, it totally changes the dynamics of what we're doing. It takes a mediocre or a medium level energy task and turns it into a high energy task. So people get up there and if the door ain't pop, they start snatching on it, the bar flips out and they get, they get frustrated. So we teach those things right there. We don't really teach this, even though it will give you mechanical advantage of 61.